K4s, men's and women's 500 meter K4s. That's going to be really exciting as that event continues to ramp up prior to its inclusion in Tokyo. But we've also got some 200 meter racing in the K2s, which is quite close to my heart. Um, but then we've also got some, you know, massive rivalries in the C2 races coming up as well. And then the women's K1 500 is, um, is going to be a brilliant afternoon. Well, we will kick things off in just a moment with the final of the women's C2 500 meters. And we'll also have the K1 500 as well. That will be followed by the men's C2 and K2 1000 meters and the finals of the C2 and K2 200 before culminating with Sprint Racing's showpiece event, the men's and the women's K4 500 meters. The women's C2 500, they're lining up at the top of the course now. And what a way to kickstart the final day of racing here in Duisburg, showcasing the new Olympic event for Tokyo 2020 and a real opportunity to see what these athletes will have to offer come next year. There we have in lane three from Uzbekistan, silver medalists at the under-23 World Championships in 2018. That's uh, the Uzbekistan crew alongside them in lane two from Germany. Lisa Jan and Ophelia Prella. They won, became fourth in Poznan last week. Can they make an improvement and break into the medals? That's certainly the boat to look out for. That's Canada's Lawrence, Vincent Lapointe and Katie Vincent. Gold medalists in Poznan, world champions in 2017 and 2018. And alongside them, their rivals, Ma Yanan and Sun Meng Ya of China. Silver medalists in Poznan, they had a terrible start, but pushed Canada every step of the way. I'm expecting a big, big battle in those two center lanes between Canada and China in lanes four and five today. Keep an eye out for that uh, Russian pair of Kurach and Romasenko of Russia, China's Xu and Zhang also in lane eight. And a mention as well for the Hungarian pair. Look for them in lane six, Bala and Takac, reigning European champions in this event. Well, we're underway in the final day of racing here at the ICF Canoe Sprint World Cup here in Duisburg. It's the women's C2 500 metres and already a massive, massive start from the Canadian pairing. That's Vincent Lapointe and Katie Vincent. If you want a masterclass in how to paddle a C2, just look at these girls. Yeah, and the Chinese, that crew there, they've got out a lot better than last weekend. They're still a little bit down on the Canadians at this point, but last weekend they really didn't get off the line, so it's going to be interesting to see if they can challenge towards the end of the race. But the Hungarians are already putting that challenge down. They weren't racing at Poznan, but they're really going to want to, to measure themselves against the Chinese and the Canadians. Well, we're through the halfway mark now, through the 250. Canada and Hungary are going head-to-head -head with Canada just a nose in the lead. China, though, still in touch, still in contention for those medals. Remember, China have a very, very good finish indeed. We saw that last week. Hungary just a nose behind Canada as they go through the 200-meter mark. Yeah, this is lining up to be one of the best C2 500s we've seen. We've got people challenging across the board. We've got great conditions for a little bit of a tailwind. And they're almost neck and neck between Hungary and Canada now as they come into the last nearly 100 meters to go in just a couple of boys' time. Well, Hungary now are putting down the power. Look at them surging forward. Canada struggling to try and stay in touch. This is going to be a huge last 50 metres for Canada and Hungary. Russia in lane seven coming up now into the medals. What an upset this would be if Hungary can beat Canada to the line. It's going to be so, so close in this C2, 500 metres. Hungary take the gold with Canada with the silver medal. And Russia take bronze. Wow, what a race. That is um, a bit of a shake-up. It's just showing us how good this event is getting. Well, we don't know what's going to happen on any given race. And then the Chinese there, they actually tried to go with the pace of those two, uh, the first and second place crews there, but there was too much for them. They ended up dropping back um, out of the medals and into fourth with the bronze getting taken by the Russian crew. Yeah, a really, really powerful start there. You can see by... 
Hungary's Bala and Takac. They stayed in contention with the Canadians over the first 250 and then just surged forward in the last uh, quarter of the race. You know, these are two, two nations with an immense amount of, of canoe knowledge. Great champions coming from both Canada and Hungary. And they're really transitioning that knowledge into these, um, into these women's crew boats. Which is why that level is just picking up every single race now as we head towards Olympic qualifiers and then Tokyo next year. And uh, what an example this race has set as we look ahead, as Johnny said, to the Olympic Games. Gives us a real sample of, a real taste of what we can expect to see in 2020. But a real upset there with Canada's Vincent Lapointe and Katie Vincent, the double world champions in this event, getting pipped by Bala and Takac of Hungary. Really different styles, actually. You see the Canadians paddle both on the left-hand side, while Hungary have got one paddle on each side. And China, who had a fantastic start and uh, have had some brilliant results here in the past, just slipping back into fourth. Well, Virag Bala of Hungary won gold in the C1 500 yesterday. Kincha Takac won bronze in the C1 200. And they've come together today to pick up a gold in the C2 500 meters. 151.587 oh, wow. 